Hallelujah. I bless you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yere de bokushi karamande berekesiyo. Oramande bereke. Hallelujah God. Yere boshanda baba. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Koramunda. Come on. Hallelujah. Yere baba baba baba. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Come on. Yeah. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord make the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Come on. to you the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord may he give us peace today in the midst of situations that are brewing in this nation and all over the world in the face of COVID the Bible tells us in Psalm 46 God says that when you get to a place where you trust me completely even if the earth under you shakes and removes, you will not be afraid. Come on. <laughs> oh, yeah, Psalm 91 supports that claim. It says that when you, when you find yourself living in the secret place of the Almighty God, 
that you will be able to confidently say, God is my refuge. That means God is the place that I hide. He is my hiding place. And God is my fortress. He's my strong tower. He is my protection, my security. Come on. I said months ago that we are in the end times. We are in dark days. These are the days that will usher in the end of all things. The things concerning the earth have an expiration date. <laughs> so what does that mean? That means that we are going to see more things upon the earth that will cause us to be awestruck, that will cause us to experience fear. And if we are not grounded in God, we will lose our way. Even Christians, so many are going to be deceived in these last days. So many. But by the grace of God, as tribulation hits the earth, the church will whiten her garments. That means that the church is going to go through great tribulation. And it has already begun. As you all begin to vote for uh, uh, administrations and presidents that hate your God, people with the uh, administrations with the spirit of Babylon, the spirit of the Antichrist, they begin to make laws in your nation that contradicts everything that God is. The Bible says that where the spirit of God is, there is freedom. God is not a God that gives ultimatums. Do this or else. Take a vaccine, otherwise you can't work. Come on, the devil is a liar. And so in these last days, the church must wake up and see what we are beginning to experience. Everything that is happening has happened before. And everything that is happening now is going to happen again. And I said many times that COVID, this entire um, environment, is simply a, um, a pilot program for the Great Tribulation when that hits the earth. And so if you watch how COVID is being handled in America and all across the world, you're going to see <laughs> that it is a blueprint for what is going to be in the days of the Great Tribulation when the son of perdition, the Antichrist, is loosed in the earth right there is never a good reason to circumvent democracy or the rights of human beings there is never a good reason for it not plagues not nothing there is never a good reason to circumvent democracy never and what we are seeing today with with this administration's uh, vaccine mandate is what we saw with president obama and his health care mandate Get health care, otherwise be fined. <laughs> Come on. God is a God of freedom. God is a God of liberty. And the only times you begin to see ultimatums within government is where the spirit of Babylon is operating. That's what my message is going to be about today. I'm going to be talking about the spirit of Babylon and King Nebuchadnezzar when he gave a mandate, a presidential, a presidential mandate saying, worship the image that I have put up, otherwise be killed. And that is what this, this vaccine mandate is. I'm not against vaccines, not at all to each his own, if that's what you think you should do for you and your family, you do that. But what I have issue with is the ultimatum. If you don't take it, then you cannot work. And so all across America, we see companies beginning to fire people because people say, no, it is my right to make my own decision concerning my own health care. You don't have a right to tell me take a vaccine or not. And so they get fired for that reason. There is never a good reason to circumvent democracy, and there never will be. And so this is where we as a church, we as Christians, forget the church you go to. You have to ask yourself individually now, what is it I believe? What do I truly believe? What does this mean to me? 
And if you see the matter and it means absolutely nothing to you, then God bless you. But if you see it and you say, oh no, this is very suspicious, then perhaps the spirit of glory has begun to alight upon you. But either way, to each his own. But what you cannot do as a, 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 a Christian who, 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 who is okay with what is being done in this administ administration is you cannot judge the Christian who says, no, this is not the way it ought to be. The Bible tells us to love God first and then love each other. And so as Christians, we should do what is necessary to ensure that we do not put a stumbling block in the, in the, in the, in the pathway of others or cause harm to others. But holistically and completely, everyone's right to health care is their own decision to make. Unless something else shares your body, all right? Yeah. That's another conversation for another day. Father, I ask you to bless this service this morning. I ask you to be present here. I ask you to touch the hearts of your people. I pray that the spirit of blindness that the devil has loosed in this country, all over this world, your sons and daughters will begin to have eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to understand what you are doing, and the, to, to understand the times, to understand that we are in dark days. Today is a vaccine, tomorrow it's something else. We are in dark days. And when Christians begin to continue to vote in people with the spirit of Babylon into the presidential places, into, into the Congress, we will have issues all over the world. Give us eyes to see God, ears to hear, and a heart to receive all that you have prepared for us. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Good morning. I am Apostle Mary Gibbs. And today I'm going to be preaching a message entitled Defending Your Faith When It Is Not Popular. Defending Your Faith When It Is Not Popular. Well, let's get right on it. Um, the main scripture reading is coming from Daniel chapter 3, verses 8 through 25. Come on, I'm reading from the New King James Version. And it's necessary that we talk about these things because as Christians, we, we like to glaze over everything. You must understand the signs of the times. We are in dark days. We are in dark days. And what is happening now will happen again. We will see this again. All of it will culminate when the Antichrist is revealed. The last leader of the world is revealed. And the Bible says, when you go to the book of Daniel, it says that it was allowed, this was allowed um, because there was transgression in the world. And so this man was given an army to combat transgression. And so what did he do? He got rid of God, he cast truth to the ground, and then he began to persecute Christians. Christianity is the one thing that is going to stand in the way of the Antichrist. So Christianity must be taken down. Even in America, in this nation, these demonic laws that are being made in the White House and in the Congress, Christianity is the thing that restrains it. It is. And so until, unless you're able to remove true Christians, I'm not talking about you who go to church, you have a form of godliness, but you don't know right from wrong. You, 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 don't, you don't have discernment to know what is of God and what is of the devil. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking about Christians who have whited their garments. They're not straggling the fence. Those are the Christians I'm talking about. I'm not talking about lukewarm people. One foot in, one foot out. Whatever goes, you have a form of godliness, but you deny the power of God. I'm not talking to you. You're not really a Christian. Not really. <laughs> you have a form of godliness, but you are not a, a son of God. You're not transformed. You're deceived by the devil. So I'm not talking to you. But we are in dark days, and the church is the thing that stands that prevents the spirit of Babylon from completely taking over America. 
and nations of the world. And so unless you get rid of Christianity, the Antichrist cannot come. Period. But when Christians begin to vote into office, demonic people, evil people, we have a problem. We have a problem. But as I said in January, right, what you have voted for in this nation, you will receive for sure. Dark days are coming. Dark days are coming for sure. And perhaps when they arrive then, we will reassess the decisions that we make as Christians. A person may not be popular, fine. But if they do not contradict that which your God has commanded and required, you may not like how they speak. They may speak rough, okay? Right? Because I know in the days of Mr. Trump, everybody hated his gods. I get that. I mean, he would spoke roughly. But if you go back and look at the laws that he was trying to enact and the things he was trying to do, they were biblical. But many could not overlook his rough speech. <laughs> right? Anyway, Daniel 3. Daniel chapter 3, verses 8 through 25. Therefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came forward and accused the Jews. They spoke and said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, the flute, the harp, the lyre, and the psaltery, in symphony with all kinds of music, shall fall down and worship the gold image. Right? So what happens? Nebuchadnezzar takes it upon himself to create a gold image representing himself. And he makes a law in the land. He creates a presidential mandate, right? <laughs> okay. He creates a presidential mandate saying that everyone, when, when they play the music, everyone must bow down to the image. And whoever does not bow down to the image of, the, of, the, of gold, right, shall be thrown in the furnace. That's, that, that was the presidential mandate. Okay. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast into the mist. Oh, okay. So verse 10, it says, You, O king, have made a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, the flute, the harp, the lyre, and the psaltery, in symphony with all kinds of music, shall fall down and worship the gold image. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. Verse 12. There are certain Jews. Come on. There are certain Christians. There are certain followers of Christ. Whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not paid due regard to you. They do not serve your gods or worship the gold image which you have set up. Verse 13. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in rage and fury, gave the command to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the gold image which I have set up? Now, if you are ready, at the time you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the harp, lyre, and psaltery, in symphony with all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the image which I have made good. But if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you from my Hands. Verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If that is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. Verse 18, but if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. Come on. 
There is never a good reason ever ever to circumvent the rights of others. There is never a good reason to force on people anything. Not religion, not foods, not health care, not vaccinations, not nothing. Nothing. The Bible says that where the Spirit of God is, there is freedom. Even Christianity. God has never said, if you don't receive Christianity, then I'm going to kill you right now. No. God says, listen, the earth is under a curse because it belongs to the devil, right? The devil took dominion from mankind in back in the days of Adam and Eve when he convinced them to disobey God. In the disobedience of God, the spirit of mankind died. And the, what happens is because the spirit of mankind was the one that had the dominion of the earth, when the spirit of man died, it went down into Hades. And because the devil is the presiding prince or king over Hades, when we entered, when our spirit entered into Hades, all of a sudden, the dominion that belonged to man now became the dominion of Satan. And that is how Satan took dominion of the earth. Come on. As a result, the earth has an expiration date. Right? Period. And God says, listen, there is a way that when the earth expires, that you don't have to expire with it. But if you want to be on this lifeboat, you have to enter into Christianity so that you can be, you can be protected from the damnation or, or the end, the termination of the earth. But the choice to become a Christian and to escape from the wrath at the end of time is yours and yours alone. If you decide not to, that's your choice. If you decide to, good for you. In essence, God says with Christianity, listen, I present two doors before you, life or death. This, the door for life, this is how you must go through it. But you don't have to choose that. If you don't want that, that's okay. It's your, it's your free will to choose whatever you want. Right? God does not ever circumvent our democracy. God does not ever circumvent our free will. He never says, oh, by the way, if you don't take this vaccine, if you don't do this thing, I will kill you. And that is what this mandate is, is tantamount to. If you don't take this vaccine, then you cannot work. If you cannot work, then you will perish. I mean, right? That's how that works. For the life of me, I cannot see how this is legal in any way. And I pray that the Supreme Court will be raised up in righteousness and with wisdom to strike down this ungodly mandate. To have it repealed or at least reformed in some way. These are ungodly laws that are taking place. And the author of it the spirit behind it is the spirit of Babylon, and we saw that here. This is not the first time this has happened, and it definitely will not be the last. And the same thing is going to happen in the end of days, when they say again, if you don't take this mark, if you don't take this thing, if you don't receive into yourself whatever it is, whatever the product, whatever the thing is, I don't know what it's going to be in those days. But it's going to be the same. If you don't do this, then death. That's it. How can you say, if you don't take this, then you cannot work? What in the world is, how is that even legal in any way? How? For, the, for, for goodness sake, how in the world is that even legal? <laughs> that is wrong on every level. Sure, people should vaccinate if that's what they want to do. That's their right. But they should have the right to say, I want to or not. You can't wake up one morning and say, I'm God and I'm king, vaccinate or, or die. I mean, come on, give me a break. And that, in essence, is what this is. And every time you see this type of thing, it comes from the spirit of Babylon. The predecessor of this, this, this same administration came with Obama, President Obama. He did the same exact thing. Oh, if you don't allow people to use whatever bathroom they like, 
even though their 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 their, their genitalia is one particular thing that we take all the funding from the schools what if you don't receive health care at all costs then you must be fine give me a break the reason that America began was because people were were fleeing religious persecution people wanted to be able to believe and make decisions for themselves that was the idea behind america that's what america is it is a place of the free a place where the brave can say you know what this is why soldiers die for the most part because they believe in the cause for which they signed up. That I'm a part of, a, of, 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 of an organization that seeks to enforce freedom in the earth. What a noble cause. We have declared ourselves the champion of freedom. But it's a sad day in the world when the champion of freedom begins to make these ungodly demonic mandates. Vaccinate or else you die. That's what it is. When you really understand it, you cannot work. And that's exactly how it is going to be. In the days of the great tribulation if you don't receive whatever it is you are being asked to receive you cannot eat you cannot trade you cannot buy food you can't do nothing you can't do anything this is what makes it so dangerous and this is why Christians cannot be voting for demonic people So this is what they said. They said, Oh King, we're not going to worship you. We're not going to serve you. What are you talking about? If we die, we die. Come on. And now it's a sad day in this country when people have to say, Okay, well, I guess I will lose my job then. It is what it is. And you see these ungodly companies firing people because people are defending their faith their belief that it is my right ultimately as a citizen of the world of this great country to decide what I want to do with my own health that's not your business that's nobody's business it is ultimately my decision Isn't it funny that the same party that says it's okay for a woman to kill a baby that's in her body, even though that baby has a right to the sanctity of life, right? That child has a right to live. So the same party that says a woman has a right to destroy, murder a baby because it's in her own body, it's her own health, now says, well, you don't have a right to decide what is right for your own health. <laughs> we'll decide it for you. What a hip what a hypocrisy what a hypocrisy what a hypocrisy that is hypocrisy that's what that is but wisdom shall be justified of her children and so we see that King Nebuchadnezzar decided because the spirit of Babylon was upon him and that is what this is the spirit of Babylon is what is making what is making laws in this country at this time through this administration it's a spirit of Babylon and in the end of days it is a spirit of Babylon the same spirit that will rise up again and give power to the Antichrist and in that day they will say if you don't receive whatever it is whether it's a number a mark or whatever some way to identify yourself. I don't know what it is. I don't know that it is necessarily a chip or any of that, but whatever it is, the Bible doesn't say, it just says a mark. Something that identifies that you are part of this collective. If you don't receive a mark that says you are part of this collective, guess what? You can't eat. You can't eat. Because why would, for the life of 
anything, why would this president tie your ability to sustain yourself and to survive to receiving a mandate? That is very extreme. It is extreme. But why? Because it is a spirit of Babylon. What he's doing is coming from the throne room of hell. It is a spirit of Babylon. That's what it is. That's what it is. It's happened before. It's happening now. And it's going to happen again. <laughs> That's the way that is. Until the end of all things. So now, this is the time for those of you that believe God, to believe God for deliverance as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego believed God. Understanding that, you know what, it is possible that this is where we die. Some of us may have to leave and go to other countries. I mean, that's just the reality. I mean, you know, vaccinate, otherwise you can't eat. <laughs> What is that? What is that? That is ungodly on every place, every level. But this is why Jesus says, hey, listen, in the days of your temptation, are you willing to die? That's the question. Are you willing to die for this, for this Christianity? And this mandate has forced us to, this, to, 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 to say, you know what, what am I really made of? The issue is not the vaccine. I'm not against vaccines, not at all. I'm not against medicines, not at all. God gave us the, the knowledge for medicines to bring relief on the earth. I'm not against it. What I take issue with is the mandate. Vaccinate, otherwise you cannot eat. I take issue with that because that is ungodly. It is unconstitutional. You cannot eat. If you don't do this, wrong. No one says, don't take your vaccine. If you want to, go ahead and do that. That's your right to do whatever you want. But to say, if you don't do it, then you can't eat, that is what is wrong. That is the issue. Not the vaccine itself. Who knows what in the world is in it, but that's not, that's not the argument. So you do what you need to do for you. Well, what I'm saying is, for those of you that are Christians, you need to open your eyes and understand what this is. This is the spirit of Babylon preparing, creating a blueprint for the days of the Antichrist when those days come. We're not there yet, but that time is quickly approaching. That time is quickly drawing near. Will you able, be able to say, no, I refuse? Sure, it's going to cost me my life, and that is the scary thing. Because we think of our children, we think of, oh my gosh, how shall they eat? But when you stand between a rock and a hard place, when you look behind you and you see Pharaoh and his armies bringing destruction and devastation, when you look ahead of you and you see the Red Sea, you know what time it is? It means that it's time for you to call on God so that a miracle can happen. Come on. When all else fails. Come on, baby. When all else fails, we cry to you. Hey, you are our destiny. So we call on the name of Yahshua. We call on the name of Yahshua. When all else fails, when all else fails, would you call on the name of Yeshua? Oh! Will you call on the name of Yeshua when all else fails? Oh, Rabahaya! When all else fails, come on. When all else fails, when all else fails, we cry to you. You are our destiny. Let's keep reading. Daniel 3, 
Picking up in verse 19. After Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego says no to Nebuchadnezzar, we're not going to worship you. And if this is where we die, then this is where we die. But understand, folks, understand, my brothers and my sisters, that America is not the only country in the world. So if it's time for you to pack your things and be on your way, then it's time for that. But you should be able to stand, defend your beliefs. This is wrong, period. It is wrong. It is wrong, period. And so in verse 19, it says, Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, and the expression on his face changed toward Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Remember, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were his employees. He was their employer. Oh, come on. I'm telling you that what this man has done is exactly what his predecessor did. Because this mandate says that every federal worker, every contractor that partakes in federal contracts, whether or not you work on a federal contract, if you are employed with a company that works on federal contracts, even if you don't touch them, you must vaccinate. Otherwise, goodbye. Money. Money. Mammon is what is being used to destroy the lives of people. Money. <laughs> right? So, Nebuchadnezzar is the boss. He's the employer of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Right? He's their boss. We're not talking about people who are living somewhere else or doing their own. No. He is their boss. And so here it is. Their boss is saying to, to, to the employee, he said, listen, I'm going to ask you again. <laughs> Are you going to do what I said or no? And they say, no, we're not. He said, okay, then you die. It says, then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury and the expression on his face changed toward Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He spoke and commanded that they heat the furnace seven times more than it was usually heated. And he commanded certain mighty men of valor who were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their trousers, their turbans, and their other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. 24. And King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished, and he rose in haste. And he spoke, saying to his counselors, Did we not cast three men in, bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king. Look, he answered, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Hallelujah. Defending your faith when it is not popular. It's time for us as a Christian race, as a Christian force, to stand our ground and say no. You will not bully us. Because that is what the spirit of Babylon does. It bullies. It uses intimidation tactics to try to get what it wants. And the only other spirit that I know that does that is the spirit of witchcraft, the spirit of Jezebel. It uses intimidation tactics to try and get what it wants. Do this or else you die. And so now it is time for us to say, no, I will not. And if I perish, I perish. 
but I trust in my God. Who is going to deliver me? The prophet, the King David says, the Lord is my shepherd. Because of this, I will not have lack. He says, God makes me lie down in green pastures and he restores my soul. God leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Listen, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, come on. That's where we are right now in this nation, as Christians, as people who believe in freedom, come on. We are walking in the valley of the shadow of death. But the apostle, the king, he says, I fear no evil because you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Come on. He says, and you have prepared a table before me in the presence of Satan. You have anointed my head with oil. And my cup runs over. Surely your goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of God forever. Oh, my Father, my King, Holy Ghost, even as you have protected Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, protect the Christians that stand on your word. Protect the sons of God that say, you know what? God will deliver us, but if he doesn't, we die. If we die, we die. Come on. Protect us in this hour, Holy Ghost. Raise up champions in the Supreme Court and in the Congress that will rise up and defeat this demonic mandate in the name of Jesus. This thing that came straight from the gates of hell. Defeat this ungodly mandate in the name of Jesus. Oh, I take authority over the principalities. Oh, Rama, in your name, Jesus, Sereboko, that they be cast down. In Jesus' name, we know that the end must come. There's no way around that. These are the things that must be. But Father, keep your sons in this hour in the name of Jesus. Keep your sons. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anointing for on us. The anointing for boldness and courage. Anointing for on us. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on us. Oh, Yabahaya. Anointing fall, fall on us. Anointing fall on us. Anointing. Fall on us. Let the power of the Holy Ghost hey! fall on us. Fall on us. Anointing. Fall on us. You must take a stand, Christians. You must take a stand. America, the church in America is like the church of Laodicea. It is a lukewarm church. It is not hot or cold. <laughs> American churches goes with the flow, right? Whatever, oh, let's just keep the peace, you know. Let's not make any waves. You cannot be a Christian and not make waves. Hey, you got to stand for something. Wherever we go, we must make waves. Not because we want to cause trouble, but because we must take truth. The Bible says in Daniel, I believe it's uh, what chapter is it? Let's see. Daniel it must be uh, alright. Oh 
Oh my God, here we go, Shanda Arasia. We must make waves. Mary Sierra Amanda, we must make waves. And now I've lost my train of thought. I forgot where I was going, but my God. Here we go, Mundo. Let us beware, though. We're in dangerous times. We're in dangerous times. Hallelujah. Yere bokos yere mundo borokos yere mundo iya ramande. Yere yere bokos yere yere mukore nende. Iya yere bokos yere mundo. A yere yere bokos yere yere moshe. A ramande bereke. It says that this 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 Antichrist when he comes, he will cast truth to the ground. When this guy is done, you will true. If you're not a son of God, you will truly believe that God does not exist. That's how powerful this man, this entity is going to be. But he's not going to be a normal person. This is going to be somebody that is infused with demonic power. This is not going to be a mere man. I'm telling you. This is a person whose DNA is probably spliced with something else. He is not going to be a mere man, I'm telling you the truth. The Bible says that in Daniel 2, when, when Daniel begins to tell Nebuchadnezzar the dream, the interpretation of the dream, and, and, it, and it says you, you, there was an image that Nebuchadnezzar dreamt of, and in this image, it was the image of a man, and, 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 and it had five parts to it. A head of gold, which represented Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom. A chest and torso of, of silver. Thighs of bronze. Legs of iron. Feet of iron and clay. And the iron and clay were significant or symbolical of the last kingdom, which is a kingdom that the Antichrist is going to rise up out of. And it says that they, they mingled with the seed of man. Something that is not man is going to mingle with the DNA of man to create this Antichrist. The Santa Christ is going to be like nothing, no human we have ever seen before. And the power that he will wield will be so magnificent that he will be able to do miracles, wonders, signs. The Bible says he will be able to call down fire from the heavens. Ebosha. But the DNA splicing is going to cause a weakness, a fragility within. The Bible says that when Christ appears, he will dash into pieces this Antichrist. He will be swallowed up whole. But not before he persecutes the saints. Not before he destroys the church. <laughs> he will destroy the church. He will persecute us and kill us and behead us. He's going to do that. And so... This is what is coming on the earth. And, you know, American church, we are lukewarm. You know? We are lukewarm. We don't know what suffering is. We don't. We have our money. We have our technology. We have our science. We have our medical advances. Therefore, we think that we are okay, but we are not. The Bible says that we are poor. We are wretched. And we are blind, but we do not know that that is the... That is what has happened unto us. We think that we are something, but we are not. We have been deceived by, the, 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 by riches, by wealth. <laughs> we know nothing, but we think we know all things. And God looks at us and laughs. They are just clueless, he says, clueless. May God help us in this nation. May God help us because we're setting a precedent that is so dangerous with what this mandate is doing. Very dangerous. Father, I ask you for victory over this mandate in the name of Jesus. Let people vaccinate if they want. That's their choice. Amen. 
I ask you, Father, for power that this demonic thing may be overturned in the name of Jesus Christ. Raise up men and women in the Supreme Court to see truth and to find ways to, to stand up for the rights of all people in the name of Jesus Christ. May your anointing of boldness and courage fall upon the church. May the church stand for what is true and what is right. Understanding that we may have approached the days where we may begin to lose our lives on account of the things that we have believed and the things that we have confessed. Christianity is a religion that has blood, a lot of shedding of blood. Make no mistake about it. There is a lot of blood shedding in Christianity. Give us strength and give us courage to declare your name boldly, no matter what it costs us. In the name of Jesus. In your name I pray. Hallelujah. Perhaps you don't know this Jesus Christ that I'm talking about today. The Bible says that uh, Romans 10 verses 9 and 10 says that it is really easy to come into relationship with Jesus Christ. As I said earlier, Christianity is not by force. God is not forcing you. But the end of all things is going to come. And the thing you have to ask yourself is that when the earth comes to an end, what shall be the outcome for my own life? That's the question you must ask your own self, and only you can answer that. But God has provided a way for you to ensure that you have eternal life, that you live in paradise when it's all said and done, when the earth comes to a final screeching halt. And it says all you have to do is Accept the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. There is only one way to salvation, and that is through Jesus Christ. I know we've got billions and millions of religions, and I'm very, very sorry to have to tell you that none of those ways will get you to God. Only Jesus Christ can, because God took it upon God's self to descend to the earth as a human being and sacrifice himself on the, on the cross so that we can have a chance to live. And he says... This is what I've provided as a chance for you to live. So, if you want to live, go that way. And how do you go that way? You confess that Jesus Christ did come to the earth and he died for you. And when he spilled his blood, your sins were forgiven and washed away. You ask him to forgive you for those sins. You ask him to be your God. The one who controls you. The one who you worship. And if you do all those things, confess it with your mouth, you believe it in your heart, the Bible says you are saved. That's what salvation is. It's very simple. You know, you don't have to do tricks. You don't have to, very simple. You don't have to pay money for salvation. It's very simple. So you can say it in your words or you can repeat after me. It's up to you. Whatever you want to do is your choice. However you want to do it is fine. If you choose to repeat after me, say, Heavenly Father, I come to you today asking you to forgive me for every sin. Come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. Lead me, guide me, and make me yours. In Jesus' name I pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless you, Father. If you said that prayer, welcome into the kingdom of God. You were officially born again. You are officially a son of God. And the best days of the rest of your life have just begun. Well, Father, I commit these into your hand. I ask you to keep them, lead them. Take them to a Bible-believing church, a place where they will be brought up in the admonition of the Lord. Keep them away from wolves in sheep's clothing. Keep them away from religious places. Keep them away from places where there is the spirit of tradition and religion. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, it's been awesome being with you today. I pray that you take to heart the things I've said. I pray that you meditate upon them. I pray that you go and read your own Bible and look for the things that I've said to ensure that they are truly there. Well, until we meet again this same time next week, may God bless you, may he, may he keep you, and as the blessing says, 
May his face shine upon you. In Jesus' name, amen.